Welcome to HD Nation Tech Feed Edition, your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. You have a home theater in a box today. I do, from LG. It sounds pretty good for your movie listening experience, but we'll dive into that in a minute. We're going to talk about satellite versus cable, new Blu-ray releases, uh, but some interesting HD news making headlines this week. Obviously, if you're a home theater PC builder, Intel's Haswell CPUs probably caught your eye. Improved graphics, reduced power consumption compared to Ivy Bridge CPUs. Are they necessary? For your home theater PC build? No, absolutely not. But they are tempting. Indeed. Haswell powered laptops and desktops are all over the annual Computex show in Taiwan this week. Home theater PC builders do take note. There are some interesting parts coming, along with small form factor Nook style PCs like the, we'll take a look at Gigabyte's Haswell and Cabini powered Bricks PCs. Kind of cool design here. In terms of uh, just basically keeping the form factor very small. Like Intel's Nook, actually. I, I'm assuming, too, there's probably not a fan in there as well, which would make no. it even more ideal for, for a quiet environment like a home theater setup. And if it has the power, which, you know what, just about every PC and graphics chipset nowadays can handle. Yeah. 1080p, no problem. Has even 4K. 50% graphics performance boost over Ivy Bridge. Great. Don't need it to play 1080p video. Trust <laughs> true. us. Very uh, true. And also, uh, the Vivo PC from Asus. Um, Asus dropped a ton of product announcements, including uh, some new router activity. But this is another small factor uh, home theater PC. Uh, like and this that. one actually, it's not going to stack along with your Blu ray player, but it's not going to look profoundly awful up there at the front of your room. That looks so like a slot loading drive, maybe? People are assuming maybe. Haswell DDR3 80211. An AC if you're a bleeding edge uh, Wi-Fi enthusiast. Ton of stuff coming out at Computex. We'll have more once all of the releases drop uh, next week. Um, so, are you a Nickelodeon fan, Nick not, Jr.? Not really. Not really. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not the ideal audience right. they're targeting. So, <laughs> Cartoon Network? <laughs> Anybody? Uh, uh, now and then, yes. It's not, for me, it was not news that the Netflix deal with Viacom is ending. Uh, it's a minor source of panic in my house, given how popular Nick Jr. Nickelodeon titles are with my kindergartner on his weekly movie night. Aww. But this was big news when I found it this morning. Amazon announced more Prime Instant Video exclusive. Quote, Whoa. just completed an agreement with Viacom to include more than 250 TV seasons, more than 3,900 episodes from Nick Jr., Nickelodeon, MTV, and Comedy Central. Amazon says we've increased by 55% the number of episodes available to top prime shows for kids like SpongeBob, SquarePants, Dora the Explorer, Blue's Clues, iCarly, and like 400 additional shows. I can only hope that they're, they're finally someone will have the entire year of unspeakably awesome uh, the Jack's Big Music Show. This sounds like a boon for parents who may have yeah. had to, I don't know, repurchase the same disc over and over and over, and now some of their hopefully favorite content is going to be available for streaming. Parents and people who like to do things on the couch involving smoke, pizza, and just watching... College! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, got, we have another one for that crowd in a couple minutes, but oh, uh, man. yeah, if you're not familiar with Amazon Prime, like basically if you want the cool stuff for the free, basically Prime Instant Video, uh, Amazon Prime is uh, basically video, yes, that's cool, but what's really cool is free second day delivery on goods purchased from or fulfilled by Amazon. If I sound like an infomercial, it's because it is a staple in our house. Anytime I can get a lawnmower overnighted to my house for four bucks and spend a hundred bucks less than I do at my local big box store who couldn't even tell me where the lawnmowers were. You get Two Amazon socks. Prime. Yes. Two day delivery. Oh, it's free. Yes. Unbelievable. Free I love it. Yeah. Hey, your favorite movies and TV shows feature carefully crafted multi channel soundtracks that pretty much all but go wasted on the tinny, tinny, tiny sounding speakers that are built into most TVs. Now, LG has a brand new BH9430 PW Smart 3D Blu ray home theater system. This is basically a convenient all-in-one package that includes an amplifier, surround sound, speakers, an upscaling disc player, and integration with your mobile devices. I think it's time to take a look at this thing right now. It's, you it's are like holding a speaker that. on a stick. It is a speaker on the stick. One of the front channel speakers. Let me grab the receiver. So 5.1 speaker system, wireless Ooh. rear channels. You got uh, it. The LG BH9340PW sells for 800 bucks. Uh, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, USB, Bluetooth, uh, Miracast, cool. Uh, Near field communication, so you can tap the box because everybody wants to get off the couch to <sighs> tap their home theater system. That's a pretty feature, uh, pretty easy feature to enable, actually. <laughs> uh, this is a 4K upscaling Blu-ray player, though, complete with uh, all the apps you would expect from mm -hmm. you know your Blu-ray playing experience. Also on the back of this baby is a two-port HDMI oh. switch, giving it some of the functionality you'll see with with uh, compared to say a standalone AV receiver. Uh, for a device like this, you're talking simple setup, actually. Let me. 
highlight part of that simple setup is its speaker connections. One, you are using custom speaker wire in the sense that they feature these very, I don't know, almost like Ethernet style connection jacks that are color coded, uh, making it not only simple to assemble the speaker itself as far as just needing a Phillips screwdriver, but these color coded connectors which match the ports on the back make it simple just to get the right speakers connected to the right ports. Right. Uh, also, the wire is fairly ample in terms of length. So depending on the room size you're dealing with, especially yeah. for the front channels, uh, you're going to have pretty much a good, easy time placing these anywhere you want. And it has to be, because you're not going to find this cable at Radio Shack. No. You're not going to find it probably. No, with, and I was actually ease. fairly pleased. You, you could spread these speakers out probably close to 20 feet if you've got the AV receiver part here centrally located. Now, we did mention that the rear channels are wireless for the rear speakers. Where did my little rear channel go? Oh, oh right there away. it is. Let me grab that. Here is an example of the rear channel speakers. Now, ta-da, right there. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is, you notice how tall the front speaker is? It comes with its own stand that is quite nice, actually, and there's actually multiple speakers built into that. The rear channels are just this size only, and they also include no hardware for mounting, if you want. No, 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 no. It's or, got or a little stand so you can that. hang them on a nail. There it is. Uh, and it's also got the sort of universal <laughs> mount that you can true. pick up. That's true. There is a hole back there and a fastener for that. You can't really, oh, there, oh, you right. just see it up there. You could there. just put a nail in the wall or a screw and hang it right there, so. Well, this, this is also kind of a standard mount for a totally. ball joint mount. Now, while you've got all of this set up, including a nice center channel as well, one thing that it didn't include was auto calibration setup, ah. basically. There's, there's no little, little speaker included, or little microphone included for doing the level and distance setups. So grab that tape measure and your sound pressure level meter and get cracking on this. At least it includes independent controls for the speaker setup that way. Now, there is a mobile app that's actually quite good. I was surprised. I'm hoping that maybe they'll incorporate part of the auto cal setup into that mobile app. I think that would be a good thing to add. And it might be doable in terms of being able to use the microphone built into your, I'm thinking out loud here. Anyway. You're thinking out loud and also you're, you're thinking about the fact that no two microphones have quite the same audio profile. And then. And I don't want you using that to calibrate And should I go C-weighted or A-weighted? Ah, that's a whole different, yeah. whole different <laughs> argument right there. Now, LG describes the BH9430 uh, as a 9-1 audio setup. What? Uh, they're calling this basically 9-1 because your front speakers and the surround speakers on the top feature a separately wired up-firing speaker, complete with independent level controls now. Now, it, it, yes, those are separately wired drivers firing up now, and they will call that because there are four of them total for all the four corners. So they made up their own 9.1 spec. Totally. Yeah. Now, I will say that the speakers are balanced. These are fairly small drivers, about two and three quarter inches with a decently tuned sub, but no surprise, of all the sound processing this thing is capable of, I found the bypass button to be the most effective and preferred preset of you all. You didn't want to go for the giant concert hall or the traditional acoustic <sighs> opera environment or the, what are the, I mean, what, what were the settings? I mean, Not at all. The big one really for this setup is something called 3D sound, oh and dear. it's for specifically for modes optimized for music and movies. Mm -hmm. Every time I enabled this feature, one button press, it's really nice on the remote, the sound just it became hollow and echoey at best, and this will simply be ignored by most purists. Easy enough to disable, like I said, <laughs> one other button just to go to bypass mode. However, for my DVD and Blu-ray movie playback, the LG Home Theater system, it actually resulted in a pretty solid listening experience that will blow away any TV speakers and most sound bars. Vocal clarity from the front channels was very good, and I felt fairly well enveloped by the surround sound tracks that I listened to. Now, I will say their home theater setup also made it very easy to differentiate between lossless audio tracks that you get on some of the latest Blu-ray releases compared to the more standard Dolby Digital compressed tracks that you would get uh, from your regular movies. In the case in point with the WoW disc, they have the same music track that's encoded not only at uh, 26 kilo, or 96 kilohertz, 24 bit DTS master audio, running at about close to 25 megabit versus a Dolby Digital track, same music, uh, done at 40, a standard 48 kilohertz, 16-bit, like you'd get on an audio CD. The difference is night and day on a system like this, and it just encourages me to really remind you that the new lossless audio tracks sound great if you can get support for it right. and enjoy that with your moves. It's something to consider when you want to upgrade. A reason to upgrade would be to have that, that support for the, the audio that's incorporated into the latest movies. How it about just sounds great. File support for streaming audio. Obviously, Apple lossless, probably not going to be there, but what about no. FLAC? Apple lossless support it? I, didn't trust, test for Apple loss, okay. losses, but my collection isn't flack, and you know what? I was able to plug a USB key right in and have solid support for my archive. However, I will say that the audio reproduction with music specifically didn't blow me away. I, I kept longing for just a decent set of reference stereo speakers or even headphones. Uh, 
Music, no problem, or uh, movies, no problem. The music side of it, nah, not so impressive. Now, I will say the 9430PW home theater system, it provided that solid home theater experience for movies and for my TV shows as well. Now, the odd sounding 3D audio features are easily bypassed. Now, $800 is the price point for buying the convenience of an all in one package like this without any of the convenience of having automated sound setup. Right. And for an audio setup, that's, that's kind of critical, really. And at this price point, I really got to start thinking about separate components at this point. Is there no, okay, so there is HDMI input, that's yep. good. You have HDMI okay. input, basic HDMI switching, uh, network enabled as far as right. automated updates, your Blu-ray player gets updated, great speakers, plenty of amp, uh, amps too for, for driving or wattage for driving the speaker system. No loss of volume here. You got, you'll get plenty of sound out <laughs> of it. And if you stick to your sa standard Dolby Digital DTS formats and the lossless formats for movies, it's going to be great. However, I just priced out a system with like a Sony AVR, Energy 5.1 speaker kit, stuff I basically found on Amazon that had good reviews. Mm -hmm. You add something like a spool of speaker wire and whatever sounds or mounts or speaker stands or mounts that you like, and you're set for you know a price point that you could probably hit a little bit less than this. So, a couple hundred less. Yeah. 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 However, it's the convenience factor. Having an all-in-one box, arguably an attractive design, and it worked pretty well for my mood for my movies, and for that, I, I loved it. Excellent surround sound, keep the effects off. Don't worry about the fact that the Blu-ray player and the amp are all in one box. No. Even if it's, you want to upgrade later on. And I, I am, or when we first looked at this at CES, mm -hmm. actually, they had originally positioned this as having four identical tower speakers. By the time it actually hit the stores, I'm not seeing the tower speakers available as an option, period. You are getting different speakers on each corner, essentially the two towers for the front and the two surrounds for the rear. I'd prefer to have four identical speakers, but right. if you look at the trend for 2013 I'm seeing, all of the home theater kits are actually including the smaller rear channels. And I don't know if that's just a trend to save money, but it's something to keep in mind. I, I prefer five identical speakers if possible, but right. in this case, that's one of, the, one of the differences you'll see between this and other setups. Not quite thumbs down, not quite thumbs up. No, for, for movies it's great, but again, 800 bucks, I'm, I'm, cons I'm considering separates. Okay. That's really what it comes down to. Blu-ray picks, people. Let's talk about the Blu-ray picks for the week of June 4th, 2013 for the couch crowd looking for something to watch with their pizza. Number one with a bullet, Adventure Time, the complete first season on Blu-ray. Yes, the cartoon's Emmy-nominated series about Finn and his magic talk, Jake, and their post-apocalyptic adventures is most beloved, but mostly I'm thrilled with any cartoon comes out with all the episodes on one season on one disc. 286 minutes of joy here, one 11-minute episode at a time. And by the way, the complete second season also coming out this week. If you're an Adventure Time fan, it is a good week for you. While we're having fun here, let's talk about Warm Bodies on Blu-ray. Summit Entertainment, you might not have heard of them, but this is your basic action comedy zombie love story thing. High Def Digest said the MPEG-4 AVC encode is in its original 2.4 to, 2 to 1 aspect ratio and, quote, perfectly captures how Warm Bodies looked in the cinemas. The BD-50 includes an iTunes digital download, an HD ultraviolet streaming, and I'd say just rip it yourself, although iTunes digital downloads are convenient. A lot of good stuff coming out this week. Other notable releases include Breaking Bad, the fifth season, and the five-disc Alfred Hitchcock Essentials Collection, which includes Psycho, Rear Window, North by Northwest, Vertigo, and The Birds at $55. It's a lot more affordable than Criterion's superb 15-disc Alfred Hitchcock, the Masterpiece Collection that came out back in 2012. We've also got your basic... Uh, Mad Max Trilogy, the World War II classic Midway, and if you missed the 2010 Clint Eastwood Blu-ray collection, 19 of the man's finest work on Blu-ray, which sells for 150 bucks used online right now, you'll be thrilled to know that Warner has just released the Clint Eastwood 20 film collection on Blu-ray. No, the man with no name ain't there. Warner doesn't have the rights to the Sergio Leone films, but there's some great stuff here, both with Eastwood acting and directing. Dirty Harry, The Outlaw, Josie Wales, Mystic River, Million Dollar Baby, Invictus, uh, Invictus, I should say that properly, Letters from Iwo Jima, and quite a bit more. And Yes, while I do love Bruce Willis, and as much fun as I had watching Live Free or Die Hard, let's not talk about a good day to <laughs> die hard. Go look for Looper or Moonrise Kingdom or Live Free or Die Hard if you're looking for some Bruce Willis-powered mayhem. Looper loved it. Looper loved it. Not bad. There's some. There might be a plot hole or two in that movie, but don't think about it too hard. And there's a. Uh, I'm not gonna give it away. I don't want to give. It away. <laughs> hey, Alfred emails HDNation at revision3.com. Quote. 
Do you know if The Abyss is going to be on Blu-ray anytime? Also, when is 16x9 going to be the TV standard on cable and satellite on the non-high-def channels? It would be nice to see 16x9 content fill the screen instead of black framed. It's a pet peeve. It's just a pet peeve. Signed, Alfred. So part of the reason why we see sort of you know, pillars on older content and letterboxing on newer content is because they don't shoot everything. Like, stuff shot for television is gonna be like 16 by nine or 16 by 10, period, end of discussion. Movies, however, have aspect ratios anywhere from 183 to one to 240 to one and all over the map. Occasionally you see one that's shot in like a, a, a 1080p style resolution, um, 16 by 10 or 16 by nine resolution. Historically, the show, the movies have always been shot in a four by three format. Yeah. That, that was how our old TVs, this, the boxy TVs used to, uh, matched just perfectly, and that was a, that was a nice yeah. transition. And then when we went to wider screen TVs, the aspect ratio, or the shape of the well, picture, wider is, screen movie theaters, exactly. <laughs> for for the cinema, though, the right. director or the film producer can can decide on any shape for the movie, and it doesn't have. There is no standard for that. There are some that they tend to adhere to just because it's a little easier for production purposes. But that shape can be matted to to our TVs, which mm -hmm. are a fixed shape. And when you do that, you would then need to reformat the video somehow typically using either yeah. the letterbox bars or the pillar bars for the 4x3 content or widescreen content. Which I, I would prefer to have some black bars above and below the movie than have them chop off the left and right of Ooh, the frame. That's where I'm going for the zoom function. Yes. <laughs> uh, as far as release dates for The Abyss, we find about uh, we find out when movies are going to hit Blu-ray about the same time you do. Press releases, posts on the internet, uh, search and release dates on uh, on sites like High Def Disc Digest, Blu-ray.com, and High Def Disc News. That said, the Digital Bits rumor mill pegs The Abyss release is coming in 2014, with some pretty good connecting the dots going on here, based on some interviews with characters uh, from the movie or from some uh, related time period. Uh, uh, James Cameron stuff, uh, not to mention 2014 would be the 25th anniversary of the original release. If you don't want to spend a lot of time searching uh, rumors and courting disappointment on the internet, just go to Amazon and <laughs> sign up to be notified when this item becomes available. Because let me tell you, seriously, Amazon wants to sell you stuff and they will let you know immediately as soon as they have a solid release date. Or, so convenient. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the many things in Amazon does that's so nice. And look, there's probably thousands of people already signed up to find out about this. Awesome. Rumors about the abyss have been floating around since like 2010, but at this point, when Elijah Dushku, who was in the abyss, says she Michael was Bean. in the studio recording stuff for Kyle. something new around the abyss, I'm saying it's a pretty good sign that the abyss is going to hit Blu-ray. Oh, that movie's coming. <laughs> when? Soon? Soon. 2014. <laughs> That's kind of soon. It's, it's 25 coming. years old. It'll be here before we know it. At TV Film, at Video TV Film, excuse me, tweets, at HD Nation, I'm a cord cutter. What do you think of Xbox One working with an external ATSC tuner for all the Xbox One TV viewing hype? Well, I say ask us after E3, but I'm not holding my breath for external tuner support. Yeah. At least not yet. That Would we like to see it? Yes. Does oh, it have the power to do it? Yes. Uh, Are there we... products ready to go that could be easily incorporated? Oh, yeah. <sighs> hey, Dean.com 888 tweets at HD Nation. New Vola NP1 is out soon. Any chance this is a good product for 4K video? Question mark. Would be great if you guys reviewed this on the say, uh, the Seiki Psyche? Seiki TV. Yes, my 4K Wonder Box. <laughs> uh, now I have concerns about content availability. If Amazon and Netflix and Google are fighting it out with Sony. Okay, only Sony cares about 4K right now, but right. <laughs> but content will either make or break this box, and unless it has fantastic up conversion to 4K resolution, what else are you gonna do with it? Yeah, we're not gonna know for a while. Nanotech certainly writes a great press release, but this is a $300 4K Ultra HD player and a 4K streaming service they're gonna call Nanoflex UHD. It's pretty much a press release right now. They're saying it's gonna be based on an ARM A7 quad core with a custom 3D GPU optimized for 4K video playback. They're down in San Jose. Um, we'll see if we can get hands on before the July 15th release. Um, but you know. Subjectively speaking, I've looked at upscaling 720p video to 4K resolution and I've done some tests at 1080p resolution upscaled to 4K. Right. The 1080p to 4K looks pretty good. Anything less than that I'm finding is just getting softer and softer looking. DVDs upscaled to 4K really are pushing the right. limit if you're sitting at the same viewing distance. You can always move further back to help improve when you're viewing lower resolution video on a high resolution display. But overall, if you're doing any kind of up conversion to 4K, I hope 
they're starting with Blu-ray quality video right. to make it to make it the best experience possible for a 4K system. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, they're competing with the biggest, the biggest, deepest pockets uh, over content rights. I mean, and it's interesting. So you know, they 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 can create GIF files from MP4s. Uh, you know, they they apparently have a multi-pin, a multi-game pinball machine system out. Uh, they do Android applications. So I, mostly, though, they're really excited on their website about talking about uh, how happy their investors are. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's look. At least they're starting with kind of a couple known entities: an inexpensive ARM processor uh, and Android. So we wait. Lots of my favorite buzzwords. <laughs> Bring it on! Quad Greg. HD, 4K, whatever you want to call it. Oh man, we Greg, love you either way. Greg and Tony tweet: <laughs> Had HD Nation bought a new house? We're deciding between Dish Network or Time Warner Cable. Has satellite gotten any better? Um, define better. Uh, I, you know, I haven't. I don't think I've had cable or satellite in five years, maybe longer. Um, I would say quality of live TV. I would say cable will win right. every time. However, in terms of just features and how you want to watch TV, the stuff Dish Network's doing right now in terms of being able to download your, being able to record all of prime time at once, whether or not you need to, and then be able to pick and choose the shows you want at a later date. Those kind of being able to view anywhere in your home easily and sharing that content with your mobile devices, they're as far ahead of this as anybody doing it right now. And uh, especially if you're into mobile. If you're just looking for straight live TV quality, I'm, I'm always leaning more toward cable right. in, my, in my personal eyes-on viewing experiences side by side. It can vary considerably depending on the quality of your cable provider, because cable providers are very regional and very local. Part of the reason I went with DirecTV is, you know, and this was like five or six years ago, is Comcast here in San Francisco when I lived here was doing a horrible job and compressing the hell out of everything, so everything looked awful. And I could get all the same channels, spend almost 40% less by going with DirecTV. DirecTV also had the DVR options that were available at that point. So, you know, check locally, you know, see if you can find anybody, you know, dish a dish demo is going to look pretty legitimate. See if you can find somebody's dish or DirecTV to look at and talk to your neighbors and take a look at what their HDTV looks like. If their quality looks great, you might want to think about Time Warner Cable. If the quality looks awful, or if it's like three thousand dollars to get the combina a month to get the combination of channels you want, you may want to start looking at the satellite options. Totally, and for me too, it's also if you're dealing with a household environment where it mm -hmm. might be multiple rooms instead of just the home theater room, that's where some of the additional ways of streaming content around the house might be more cost effective than going with separate cable boxes in every room. Uh, that's why I kept pointing back to for Dish Network in that case, their Hopper technology in particular. It's some some cool stuff there <laughs> in terms of just having smaller right. network connected boxes be able to stream content off the main DVR box. Very similar to what I do at home with my own home theater PC and Windows Media Center and its own its own little streaming box. I use I use a variety of different extenders to move that around my house. Here's a question: uh, streaming off of Netflix or Amazon Prime or Google Play or iTunes all varies a lot depending on the quality of the basically uh, the the file that's been captured and rendered and made available on that surface. Um, that said, do you find those comparable, better, or worse than the, the Dish or DirecTV streaming? It, for, that, uh, the, the streaming experience should be pretty standard because you're within your home network environment, mm -hmm. and speed should be no problem. Uh, we're not talking about having to trans transfer anything over the internet. This right. is all staying local, once it's in your house at least. Uh, beyond that, it would be more about ease of use, really. Is, is it just going to work for you with, with the hardware setup you've got? And as far as quality goes, it, I. All, everybody's offering like a 1080p downloaded type video scenario now. You, you can do like a on-demand scenario where from either cable or satellite mm -hmm. receive very high quality content now. But for live programming in particular, like your sporting events, stuff you're going to watch live and a live event, generally speaking, I find that they're compressing the bits on the downstream mm -hmm. uh, more so on your satellite feeds than with cable. However, there are other technologies if they keep moving forward with, say, H.265 right. on your downlinks and the hardware gets upgraded, you could suddenly create a much better looking picture over the same available bandwidth. Those kind of, it's that, it, when you're shooting signals from space, you're right. a little more confined than you are running it over a piece of copper into your house. So or, your, or your preferred fiber. would be like over the air, a quality cable service. Those two should be identical. Satellite, though. and then at the bottom of the pile, probably streaming services. Yeah, for for especially when it comes to live content, because uh, if it's pre-recorded, you know that's where it's going to be, pretty much up to how you got it into your system mm -hmm. to begin with. It's it's that content where it's like you know I'm going to turn on this live sporting event, and I just want to make sure that everything I'm seeing is as good as it was delivered from the broadcast center, either either locally there at the event or or from wherever it's coming from.
And before we go, let us tell you about Revision 3's new network, TestTube. TestTube.com is awesome, people. We're exploring science, the nature of things, life, curiosity. It sounds all fluffy, but there's a lot of really, really good videos here. Check out the new shows at TestTube.com. Tell your friends, and do me a favor, start with TestTube.com slash nature hates slash grass, because grass hates you. And our buddy Anthony Carboni is going to tell you why. And that's it for this episode of AC Nation Tech Feed Edition. Please subscribe to Tech Feed to get our show on your YouTube lineup and tell us what you think. That's right. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions right down below. And until next time, thank you for watching.